more on a really personal level that even some of my friends who are watching this probably didn't even know I was going through this. And that's also part of the problem. Hi everyone, thanks for coming back to my channel. Um, this week is gonna be a little bit different, um, more on a really personal level that even some of my friends who are watching this probably didn't even know I was going through this. And that's also part of the problem with when these things happen is that as a woman, as a family, as someone going through this, it's it's hard to go through. So you kind of just go through it alone with your family and it makes it so much harder. And I'm definitely gonna get emotional during this because it's just a topic that unfortunately so m many women go through, but there's like, there's not really many like things to help us unless we get help. So here it is. Um, we have been struggling with having our second baby and it's been, a really hard process like it's just been frustrating and confusing and you're you're like how could you even have the have this happen when you had your first baby with no issues but it happens so much and it happens a lot more than you would even know because nobody talks about it or shares about it because it's not something you want to share so anyways um I am sharing and opening up about this because I think that it's almost like therapeutic for myself. Um, and I decided to take a journey of vlogging and wanted to open up about this topic because it is so common and we're going through it right now. Um, so basically my story, we, as soon as I stopped breastfeeding Jay, at like eight months, I breastfed him, breastfed him for, and I basically stopped because I wasn't really producing that much milk. And so then I um got my period because if you breastfeed, you don't get your period until you're done breastfeeding essentially. So it took me really like eight full months after I had Jay that I actually got my period. And then I, I in instinctually just wanted to try to have another baby right away I was like I want all these hard years to kind of blend together and I want to have another baby that's close in age and we got pregnant <clears throat> we got pregnant the first month of trying again and I got so excited like I don't know I just was like this is great like it happened so quick and I'm so excited and I remember messaging my cousin, who's like my sister, and I was like, the line is just not getting darker. I don't understand why it's not getting darker. And she's like, yeah, that happened to me before too. It will get darker, don't worry. And then it just didn't get darker. And then we told our family, we got excited. Like I would not have thought anything different. And then I started bleeding. And I was like, what the heck? Like I was, it was literally like 10 to 15, 17 days post ovulation that I was pregnant and then I started bleeding sorry I'm like shaking talking about this because it's just like uncomfortable um but I know people can relate to this so I just want to share my story and then go from there but anyways so then um turns out it was a chemical pregnancy that first one and then my period came like pretty soon after it was supposed to, it was like eight days or nine days late or something. So I didn't try the next month, but I tried the month after that. We got pregnant again. And I was like, this is great. Like nothing's bad. So I went in, everything was fine. I, I went to my OB, like the heart rate was great. And all my sign, all my like blood counts were actually my first blood count at like six weeks I think it was was like 50,000 hcg which was like super high everyone's like you're having twins and I was like oh my gosh this is awesome like I just had a chemical pregnancy so like I'm gonna be fine um and then I went in for my 
12, oh, this is like, seriously, it's like re bringing up all these things. And um, I went in for our 12 week, um, I went in for our 12 week scan and my husband was like running late. I was like trying to get to the hospital and I remember just laying, I was, I went to um, the hospital to have like my ultrasound for the first trimester scan. And I um, was laying there and the technician, I was like, can we just wait for my husband? He's going to be, he's like literally here. He's just coming up here. She's like, oh, don't worry. Um, we're going to do a scan together now. And then the doctor's going to come in after and um they'll scan again and he can see again and i was like okay and so i'm like so excited just like looking at the screen where the baby is and you could see the little baby it was like this it was like 11 weeks old whatever and uh, i just look up at the screen and it was just floating i said um is he okay is it okay and actually the day before that I had done like this, it's called sneak peek for, um, for checking your gender early and I could check it eight weeks. And I was like, so excited because I'm the type of person I can't wait. I like need to know right away what gender I'm having. So, um, I got the gender the day before we did a video of the gender and I'll probably actually share that because it was a beautiful moment and we were so excited that we were having another boy. What is it? I knew it. No! I knew it based on her body language. The next day we went to the hospital and so he he wasn't moving and I said to the technician I was like is everything okay and she's like I should we should have waited for your husband and I'm so sorry and um I just sobbed like it still hurts to that today and this was like a year ago now but it was like so hard to go through because I was so excited um and it happens. The baby was just really sick. And unfortunately, it, didn't, it just didn't work out for us then. So I had to have a DNC. I think I went in the next day because I was just like, I just want this to be, to move forward. And I want to try to have another baby. Like I, that was my goal. I was like, I'm not giving up. We're going to do this again. So I had the DNC and everything went fine. And then I waited, I think, I waited because I was like, I don't, I want my body to fully heal and I want to feel like I'm in a good place mentally. So we waited six months before we started trying again and we didn't get pregnant that first month, but we got pregnant the second month of trying. I have no problem getting pregnant, clearly. Um, so then I went in for my, because I had lost two babies before, my OB was like, come in early, like, we'll check everything for you early. So I went in it, I think I was six weeks exactly. No, no, I think it was maybe seven weeks, which was like torture, because you just want to know. But I had like, gotten my HCG blood taken and it was pretty good. And so then I um went in for my scan at... I think it was seven weeks and I didn't see anything in there. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. How is this possible that there's no baby? Like I've, I have HCG. Like I, I, my, just had my blood taken, like I'm pregnant. So I was so confused and they're like, oh, um, you must've, um, ovulated late. So I was like, because I check my ovulation pretty great. Like I pee on a stick. Like I know exactly when I ovulate. I have this whole tracking thing. And that's probably how I got pregnant. How I get pregnant so quick. Because I'm like really good at tracking through this ovulation strip test. Which I'll I'll link what I get down below. Because it's 99.9% .9 accurate. You know exactly when your LH surges and everything. So sorry. I'm like boogery and cry. Sorry. You're getting me wicked emotional this week. But... Um, 
so anyways i was so confused and they're like we need you to come back i think it was the next week because so they said i was pregnant sorry i'm not telling the whole story well well so they said i was pregnant but that i was measuring at six weeks and there was no fetal pull yet so i was like that it just doesn't feel right but i talked to the doctor and she's like no it's like normal you might have just ovulated late and in my gut again i was like there's no way i did but whatever <sighs> so i went back the next week and there was a baby there it was like super little it was they measured it to be at six weeks and then there was like barely a heartbeat and I was like what that it was like 55 I don't know it was like super low I can't even remember anymore because it's just been like so traumatic this whole thing so I went back again the next time I think it was another week later so now we're like three weeks out which would have made me six seven, eight weeks I was like super far behind than when I thought I was and I went back and the baby was not alive and I'm at this point just like I don't know what's going on I had both babies tested I did chromosomal testing because I needed to know <sighs> so the first one was a chemical the second one had down syndrome and the third one there was nothing wrong so once you lose three babies in a row, your OB is basically like, you have to work with a fertility doctor and figure out what's going on. So that was my next step. Uh, actually, sorry, there was something that happened before that. So I had to have another DNC because again, I just wanted the process to go quickly. And that was like, for me, the best solution. I didn't want to naturally like have the baby come out at six weeks and like, ugh, I just, I, I'm not good with like seeing things or like, having things happen so I just I was like nope I just want a DNC so we did that and then I thought it was fine and then I bled for like nine or I actually have it all written down but it, I bled for like nine to twelve days or something in a row after the DNC and I was like okay that's normal whatever and then two weeks later I was I woke up and I like like so much blood came, sorry, this is TMI, but so much blood came out of me and I was like, what the heck is going on? This is like insane. I've never ever bled like this before in my life. And then um, I went back to the OB, they did like a, no, I went to the emergency room cause I was like, this is not right. Like I'm bleeding like crazy. And long story short, it, I found out that even at six weeks, so the baby was like this, it was like tiny, tiny, tiny. And I specifically didn't want a DNC. Oh, but I, so that was my second DNC in a row within six months of each other, I think. Yeah, six months of each other, I had two DNCs. Sorry, the story is getting crazy and like maybe confusing. So I hope you're still following. <laughs> I'm really all over the place, but um, so anyway, so then I um, was bleeding, went to the emergency room, but they found out that I had retained placenta. I was like, this has got to be a joke. So they were like, you have to do another DNC to get the routine placenta out. So I was talking to my doctor. I was like, I can't do three DNCs within eight months of each other. Because I think it was like another month at that point that had gone by between the DNC and the next one because I had retained placenta. I was devastated because basically if you get like multiple of these, it just like creates issues in your uterine lining and it's not good for you'll have more miscarriages essentially like it's just inevitable because your body is like it's like scraping and it's really bad um so anyways I I we figured out a plan that they were just going to go in with a little camera and take that retained placenta out and um they did that and it actually worked out great. And then I went to the fertility doctor and met with them and they were like, you have to run all these tests. You and your husband have to do blood work. We have to do another, um, we have to take a piece of your like cervix. And I was like, what the heck? Like, this is just too much going in my body. Like, can't we just give myself a break? I was really upset. I was like devastated. 
because it mentally like takes a toll on you when you go through this and then to feel like you're just constantly being picked at and like oh so because they had gone in with that camera I actually didn't have to go in and have that piece of my um cervix taken out so I was really happy that we figured that out together and then we did find out though that I had an infection in my uterine lining which could have possibly happened since I had J and maybe that's the issue that had been caused so basically the fertility doctor had me go on um this doxycycline prescription to clear up the infection and then suggested that we go on progesterone when we start trying again so that took another like six months and so here we are um six months later and we're free to start trying again and it's just i'm scared i'm really scared um just at this point though like i i did i went to acupuncture i went to therapy i did this like sound and crystal healing because i'm just like really spiritual person um i did a lot of like more physical like working out and just focusing on myself focusing on my job not making having a baby such a priority to myself and just like knowing i want that but like not putting so much pressure on myself mentally and physically to like get pregnant and like do it quickly like I do truly believe that there is a plan for us all and sometimes it's a journey to get there but I do believe fully like I'm not giving up on this and I know that I'm a controller and I try to like make things happen the way that I want them to happen but sometimes I just need to let go and let the universe take control and that's what I'm doing so I'm not putting pressure on us um I'm just gonna kind of take each day as it comes and hope for the best and as hard as our journey was I am thankful that we went through it it's hard and I am here for all you other moms and women who couldn't can't be moms which is like I don't even know what to say to those people because I can't even imagine it hurts not being able to have a second. I can't imagine not being able to have a first. Um, and I hope that we can have our second. I'm very hopeful for it. I just maybe believe that there's a different plan for us and I'm, I'm just hopeful. <sighs> this is a really emotional conversation for me. I'm going to stop at this time because um, I think I've, <laughs> talked enough about myself today thank you for being here with me and being supportive I am okay we're okay um I actually met this really great woman sorry I'm gonna end here but when I went to acupuncture I was recommended to this wonderful woman who's like a town over from me um, through another girl who was struggling getting pregnant and she got pregnant quick. I don't, I wasn't struggling getting pregnant. I was struggling keeping a baby. So I was like, I'll do anything. I just want to like physically get my body back and spiritually. So anyways, I went and um, met this wonderful acupuncturist in the town over from me and she could like sense my anxiety and we talked through my whole situation and something that I really reflect on um, that she gave me for advice was that <sighs> trying not to get emotional again but she was just like your babies that you lost they're still with you and you can talk to them and they're with you and you'll see them again someday and just know that like they're a part of your journey and um it's gonna be okay like she just re reassured me that like me and my body are one in the same like we're gonna go through this together because I was so mad at myself I was like I'm I'm too old because I was like 35 now I'm 36 I'm too old I waited too long this is all my fault all those things and I was mad at my body and just mad about the situation because it really was a lot to do with me like that's what's like troubling about when you have kids a little bit older and I'm not saying that you can't it's just it makes it a little bit more challenging that it is a lot on more on the woman but sometimes it's just like not a good match too like our second the baby that had down syndrome that was that was an issue with my eggs 
it wasn't an issue with my husband. It, and the sec the third one I think had to do with the uterine lining. It just wasn't sticking properly. So I'm glad that I fixed that infection. But um, yeah, so oh, I've been an emotional wreck this video. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is like, she told me to like be one with my body and just <sighs> breathe. And we're in this together and we are fighting together and that I should love myself and like know that what we go through, we go through together and that whatever that journey is, that we'll do it together. So I'm trying to take each day as it comes. I do have my babies with me forever. Um, and I'm just hopeful for the future. And I hope that in some ways this was like understandable and relatable for women who've gone through fertility issues. Um, I am a very positive person so I always try to see the best even going through it yourself like it's it's so mentally and physically damaging but you don't want to give up hope especially like when you know it's you can be successful with it it's hard probably when you don't know you're going to be successful with it but when you know what it feels like to have the success you just you want it again so I'm gonna do whatever it takes um I'm really open-minded so like however it takes for us to get a second child I'm I'm open um my husband is so great about it all he's really like um really like good for me because I can get really negative but he's really positive with things so it's good to have him with me um through this journey and I'm so thankful that I have him and JJ has made it so much easier too. He's just such a joy and such a great blessing. And I do feel so blessed that I have him. Like it almost makes me appreciate him so much more because a baby really truly is a blessing. And that's that's my story. Um, I'm here to support anyone else who's gone through it. I'm gonna be documenting um, everything that we've been, well, I have been documenting everything that we've been going through on our journey to having our second child and our fertility journey. Um, but if you have any questions or suggestions for me, feel free to message me um, or just drop me a comment below and I'll reach out to you. But um, thanks again for being here. Sorry, it was a little bit darker this week. I do have much better topics. Well, more funner topics. This is a this is a good topic because I think so many like I think it's one out of four women go through th this and I just don't want anyone else to feel like they're alone because I'm here with you. And um, each day, we take each day as it comes. But mwah, I love you. Thanks for listening to me. If you mean it through this whole video, I love you so much. Thanks for being here and we'll talk to you next week.